<clears throat> Roll call to a nine here, and this is going to be another rose corner. This one's going to be particularly wrong because I'm going to talk about three incidents, all right? So please forgive uh, the traffic that's going by. People work around here, and they're all going to work. I've got turkeys in the backyard gobbling, and my goose and everybody else, is, it, they're all having their uh, morning meeting, I guess. Uh, but we're going to talk about the first in incident that happened, and that's the Jacob Blake situation. Look, that's a that's a delicate situation like the next two that we'll talk about here in a few. Uh, so, you know, what it comes down to is compliance. And there's a lot of people talking about just comply, just comply. Um... I wasn't there in that situation. I don't. We don't know all the details. Event, apparently, he was there to break up a fight or some kind of disturbance. The cops knew who he was. Uh, I've heard talks about how over the radio chatter that they knew who he was. They knew he had a warrant for his arrest. And we all know when criminals know the gig is up, they're going to run. What, what would be your thoughts? As being a police officer in that situation um, when I was taught in self-defense classes is it's not the the purpose to kill people with your firearm it's the purpose to stop threats that's the purpose uh, it's to stop you from being harmed all right that's what I was taught in a self-defense class so uh, this situation is why officers shoot that many times they unload their magazine to stop the threat it, it's taught in safety classes whether you agree with that with that aspect or not uh, that's your opinion as in these are just all my opinions on these situations compliance is something that a lot of people are don't want to do nowadays they don't want to comply with police officers due to what's going on in the country I see that a lot in most of these cases, except for the George Floyd incident, uh, where he did resist, but at the same time he did comply. Uh, compliance in some of these cases happens, and in other cases it doesn't. And this is one of the cases where it didn't, which is the Jacob Blake sh uh, shooting. Um, this is a touchy situation. Cops have been in the media for quite some time now. Uh, some people say, well, if you're going to be a cop and you're going to be on edge, then you shouldn't be a cop. I hear that a lot, especially from some big YouTubers. And I guess in a, in a, in a sort of a way, you can kind of see that. But how would you react? Would you quit your job? Would you give up your pension? Would you give up your benefits and go find another job? If that, What if that was the job that you love to do? You love to help out in your community I mean I mean these are just my opinions on this so that situation took a turn for the worst uh, in my younger years I wasn't a saint all right I wasn't uh, the greatest guy in the world and you know I had put myself in some bad spots uh, at one point I wasn't doing anything but I was choked grabbed by the neck and a gun to my head by police officers you know you know maybe I shouldn't have been there wrong place wrong time or right place just the wrong time to be there you know it was one of those situations so uh, I could see frustration I was frustrated but then I thought to myself I need to better my life I you know I need to uh, jump that plateau to be a better person, to be a better citizen, to be a better, better American. And pretty much from that point on, I turned my life around, all right? So some people don't have that opportunity to do what I did and so many other people did, you know, during their course of their lives. Some people just continue to go down that wrong path. You know, it's, it's tempting to be on the other side of the law and not be compliant and do things that you shouldn't be doing okay it's tempting we've all seen it it's been in the news we've heard the stories about people that have ever have changed their lives around and listened to their stories uh, 
this is a this is a situation that's going to be talked about. Uh, I don't believe it's going to be the last situation. I don't believe that uh, people are going to react the way they did years ago where people would just either comply. And we all know criminals aren't going to act the same way regardless because they're criminals. So that situation got out of hand. The man was shot. There's reports that he had a knife. There's reports of him having a warrant for his arrest. There, and he's got a lengthy record of having quite a few interactions with police officers, which weren't good. So, I mean, those are a couple of bad things to put yourself into. Uh, there's another video that came out that the taser, which is a less than lethal option, did not work. At some point, you're going to have to do something when people don't want to listen to commands. I mean, I hope to never be in that situation in that, in that point, but you never know what's going to happen throughout your life as you go down this journey. You know, uh, bad things happen. Bad things happen to good people, and then uh, bad things happen to you know just bad people because they continue to do bad things and those other people are just at the wrong place at the wrong time so i mean there's a lot that's fluctuating with that case uh, i haven't steadily paid attention to it you know as others have um i've watched a lot of youtubers that are either cops ex-cops and all those guys and you know their basic their basic you know wording is just to comply and if you've done nothing wrong nothing should happen to you just do what they say and then go on your way you know that's basically what they have to say me you could always you know do what they say and comply and then fight it in the courts on the next level I fought traffic tickets in one, you know, I was upset at the time, but I said, you know what, I'm going to take a different route and took that route. Um, but this is a little bit more extreme than a traffic ticket, all right? Uh, so don't take that out of context. So this is going to be something that is going to be talked about, not only for the next few months, but for the coming years, all of these incidents. So, it's, it's a sad situation. Uh, I'm not a police officer. I've never been a police officer. Uh, in my time, I've done some things. Uh, but other times, after that, I've always complied. If I have nothing to fear, then just do what they say and then fight it a different way or go on your way, you know, and, and, and continue living your life you know uh, so what I don't understand is all these people are screaming uh, for black lives matter but black lives matter haven't hasn't done anything uh, I look at it as more lives are being lost than what they're trying to prevent in some aspects of what's going around in the country and I think that people aren't grasping that concept that depending on organizations and politicians isn't going to help you very much in the long run of things. It's the community around you and the people in it that will help you get through your most troubled times. We've seen that during natural disasters. We just have the hurricane that is flowing, or the tropical storm, Laura, that's flowing uh, through the country right now. Uh, you'll see communities come together. It's up to us as individuals to depend uh, on the outcomes of certain situations. And I just don't see that organization, or the, for that fact, a lot of these organizations and politicians doing uh, such. So that's something to keep an eye on. 
uh, I thought it was a great idea when this movement started years ago. A lot of these kids are learning about it today, but that 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 organization has been there years ago, you know. And I thought it was a great way to get the black community involved in in helping themselves, helping their community, and, and putting stuff on a national stage. And it's ne and it's never been that way. It's pretty much the opposite now. It's changing people's views and perspectives. And I say to people, uh, you know, uh, when you're getting in trouble, but you're trying to turn your life around, uh, you should always look to your community, your friends and family to help you move through the difficult times in your life. Because these organizations and politicians and the talking heads of the world aren't going to help you very much. In more, more instances than not, they're going to exploit you. And they're going to use you for personal gain or wealth. That's how it is. So it's a sad situation uh, for people to lose their lives. But there are ways to avoid that. And the one thing I see in this situation is. Uh, for, for whatever it may be. Criminals will do whatever criminals do. To try to get away from. From being you know held responsible for their actions uh, I see that work on, on a right now on a consistent basis at times criminals are always trying to get around the law they're always trying to get around to get that edge uh, and it's up to me my co-workers and, and the people around there to uh, kind of stem the tide of that and, and and stamp it out when it when it presents itself so that situation is is volatile we'll have to wait for this to move forward just like the next one we're going to talk about the next one we'll talk about is the young 17 year old kid uh, that went to Kenosha I've seen report I've wa I watched this live so I I watched it and analyzed it took stopped the video and took pictures posted them on social media and I watched it the whole time and it wasn't like you're sleeping on your pillow and you woke up and some people put snippets there snippets there pictures here pictures there I watched this incident play out through its entirety when it happened on live footage so uh this kid goes to this community which is uh, from what my friends on uh, in Illinois or um, some of my friends that lived in Illinois they said this is about where he lived was about 30 minutes from Kenosha this is a tight knit kind of like a border community uh, so I look at it as us uh, here in city to New Buffalo because we're a tight bordered uh, community from Michigan uh, from New Buffalo in Michigan, so I mean I could I can see that all right so it's, it's about a 20 22 minute drive if, if the traffic is good to get there so I can see that perception uh, earlier in the day he was cleaning graffiti that's why he had the rubber gloves on a lot of people are making fun of him but he was cleaning gr graffiti off there a lot of people are saying that he's an EMT from the report I've seen from the police department uh, in his area, they had canceled the training to be an EMT due to COVID. So he never formally received the training. Whether he took classes somewhere else or, or whatnot, that's, that's, uh, that's totally uh, in the weeds right now uh, just due to the actions that led up. Uh, so that's some of the preference in what people are talking about on the internet, making fun of his gloves. Why was he there in the first place? I, the, the whole reason is why was he there? Were these people that he met up with, the people that he met on the internet, were they part of some kind of like group? Or, you know, was it his friends that he's hung out with for years? Don't know that. Uh, that information hasn't come out. The, the big one is why did he even go there? 
Uh, another big piece of the information is, uh, unfortunately in Illinois, people have to be 21 to own a fire. You have to even have a FOID card uh, that will help you buy ammunition or a fire. And he's not old enough to get one of those. So that's, a, that's another little bump in the road there. What before we go on, I want to say this: all these people that are saying, "Who cares? He's not. It doesn't matter. We should have uh, guns anyway. It doesn't matter what your age is." I hear people before all this started happening. I heard a lot of gun tubers. I heard a lot of people on the internet, all the talking heads, say that we are law-abiding citizens. That's what separates us from criminals: is being people that obey laws that are set forth whether they're on the books or the crummy ones come in but we follow the law because that separates us from criminals and I don't see them talking about that very much anymore all I see is everybody should have a gun doesn't matter what age you are patriot that's all I see nowadays what happened to these people and these people are very popular people too what happened to them saying that this is what separates us from the criminals from the law-abiding citizen so as all this stuff goes on um, they go through the night when I was watching it I had seen when they were first in front of the building uh, where all the protesters had met up and the, the guy that I was watching the live stream the first live stream from was sitting on top of the building it's called CJ TV you can find him on Facebook you can find a lot of his videos being posted on the internet by, you know, uh, news outlets, mainstream media, so forth and so on. Uh, he said he talked to a lot of people in the crowd, and this is on his live stream. You can go back and see it. Uh, hopefully, none of this stuff gets edited out uh, on these people's live streams because we know how certain people like to curve uh, media attention uh, to fit their, their narrative. Um, he said he talked to a lot of people in the crowd and a lot of those people that were protesting weren't from that area either. So that gives a little, you know, validity to the situation here. You, know, you have people saying he shouldn't have been there, he doesn't live there, but you also have protesters that shouldn't have been there and they didn't live there. All right, this is like the perfect storm at this point. So as I was watching the live stream and watching these people run around with umbrellas, put the umbrellas as like a like a shell, like you guys see in 300, the movie, and they move forward. They start lobbing projectiles, as in fireworks, water bottles, the same song and dance that we see in Portland all the time, at the police officers. At that point, the cops had enough. And that spurred them to come from uh, behind the barrier because there's a fence that length, that ran the length of that whole building. They came out and they pushed the protesters out of that little park right in front of that building. And they pushed them into the populated area. Unfortunately, this populated area is where those people that were guarding those buildings uh, were at which was suspicious to me in the first place. You know, usually they'll push them into an area where they can pretty much contain this. They pushed them into the residential area and down the street, right into the people that had firearms. And let me tell you, I bet you the police officers knew that there was people there with firearms because we've seen that video of where hit the, 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 the kid, the 17 year old kid, and his friends were walking down the street and the police handed them waters. Okay? Put that in perspective. This is stuff the other people aren't talking about. You know why? Because they didn't see it on the live feed. I did. And I seen those videos. So they knew they were there. So the first problem is they pushed, the cops pushed them into, into these armed people. The second thing is they knew those armed people were there which is scary in my opinion that's scary and we've seen what happened when they reached the gas station it turned into chaos at that point I thought to myself watching it and talking to Cindy 
this is where somebody's probably going to get shot. This is when the first shots will probably happen at this moment. Unfortunately, at that point, it didn't happen. And, it, and I even had a sense of a little bit of relief. You know, we've seen the video where the guy has the porcupine uh, shirt on, which is yellow. And that stands for being libertarian. And them saying, you know, we don't give a shit about, you know, the government and the police either. We're here to protect businesses and you if worst case scenario. So we've seen these guys. Those were the guys at that gas station that everybody talks about, which has the famous man in the red shirt. A lot of people say that guy was agitating uh, the 17-year-old at that time. The guy that they're talking about is not Kyle. It's not. Because Kyle had gloves on. He didn't have ballistic glasses or just eye protection. And he wasn't wearing the little medic pack. So, that's a false narrative that a lot of these other YouTubers are putting out there. That's how that went down. I watched it myself. Where this kid came into play, I don't know. From watching the entire live stream, I believe I only saw him once or twice. And the one group at the gas station, he might have been there. And the camera wasn't probably focused in his direction because all the... All the stuff that was shown, all the the gritty stuff, was right there in that group with those people that you saw in that clip where they said they're going down to these places to protect them. So, in the aspects, where was that kid at that point? Was there more of these militia type people? I don't know. My guess is yes. So, as we see that kind of, as I saw that, and many of us, that were watching it saw that kind of bleed over because the cops had pulled back and went back to that building uh the protesters you know they told they told the most people to get get out of there anyway they didn't want their help get out of there at that point if that was me i probably would have left at that point if i was doing something in that in that preference you know about protecting buildings because let's face it i don't care how big or bad you are you know, you might have 30 rounds, but reloading it when there's a, hundreds of people around you, it's going to be kind of quick. Whether they scatter or not, I don't know. Whether your gun malfunctions, I don't know if something bad would happen. I mean, I'm not a professional trainer. I, I you know, I, I slack in that area of, of my life, which I shouldn't have. But I don't think all of us are Billy Badass. All right. And some of these guys are not Billy Badass, especially the guy I saw in World War II gear with a Mosin Nagant. That's not a great choice. The other guy with the KSG, on the other hand, and about 60 rounds around his neck, I would take that over a Mosin Nagant any day, especially with uh, a large crowd around me. So, in essence, as that peeled off, uh, and the protesters went back to the building, then we saw the police officers push them once more. At that point, they pushed them all the way through the town. And that's where you see the videos of uh, that kid running to the, the car dealership. Before he ran to that car dealership, switched over to another live feed. And that group of people that the cops pushed down that street. We're breaking those windows, uh, jumping on top of the cars, doing what we've seen in, in, in days past. And there's even a video where they were trying to set fire to a car. At that point, that's when you see Kyle come through there, or the 17-year-old kid, whichever you want to call him, come running through there, and there's a shot that rang out. I don't know if that was him shooting in the air, or... That was somebody else taking a shot at him. I don't know. But that's when you see him uh, run and try and push the people off those cars. And that's where uh, the red shirt guy, unfortunately, uh, you know, saw his karma. Because he begged for it at the gas station. Basically. 
careful for what you wish for. So, at that point, again you hear shots ring out. And then you see him emerge from around the cars at another different camera angle uh, of a person there uh, filming the event. Because there's two camera angles. There's the first one where you see him run into the car lot. And there's a second angle from the guy on the other side of the street. Where you see him run through on the opposite side. Alright. Or the opposite angle. Not from the front side. But from the side. And you can see what transpires. Something was thrown. A lot of people are saying it's a Molotov cocktail. Some kind of explosive device. To me... It's hard to tell, but that guy did have a bag at the gas station. You never know what they put in the bags after that. I, I'm not sure. It didn't blow up. Alright, it didn't blow up. Usually, if you put some kind of gas in the container and light it on fire, and as soon as it breaks, it's probably going to start on fire. Again, I'm not an explosive expert, and I don't make um, devices like that because it's illegal. Uh... But in, in essence, uh, we see that portion of what plays out. Uh, the next part you see is him running down the street and everybody yelling at him. The people that are yelling at him were the people that were breaking the cars. Those are the people that fled after the first shots were fired at that point. And they had already moved down that street. So you see him running up down the street like all the footage has it. And all of a sudden you hear people screaming, he just shot that guy. He just shot that guy. A lot of those, one big YouTuber said he never, he was never at the, at the car lot. That's false. I've watched it happen. But I digress. So the next part you see is where he's running down the street and the first guy takes a swing at him. I couldn't really see. I'd have to watch the video one more time to see if he swung and actually hit him in the back of the head. And that, and m my perspective at, at that at that time is, yeah, I think he he hit him in the back of the head because he turns and looks. Uh, the the kid turns and looks and notices he's <laughs> he's about to be in a lot of trouble because there's quite a few people chasing him at that point in time. And then you see the guy with the skateboard. Uh, after that, hit him with a skateboard. You know, uh, so you you see that kind of uh, transpire. He trips over his own feet, falls to the ground, and the guy with the skateboard tries to hit him again, and it doesn't work out for him. The other gentleman uh, uh, walks up with a with the firearm. I believe that's a Glock 26. I could be wrong. Don't know. And that's when he shot in the arm. The first person that jumps on him is shot in the leg. Nobody knows what happens to that guy because there's two dead and one wounded. My perspective, the first guy that jumped on him, he might have caught one in the leg somewhere. Some way or somehow it grazed him because he walks off limping unless he pulled a muscle. <laughs> I don't know, they're fragile kind of kids that do this. But he, he hops away. And that's when you see the other two people... Uh, engage in, in this what I don't what I don't really quite see on the video is after the kid pops up you hear more gunfire but if you look at it his muzzle is angled at the ground uh, for a lot of us shooters especially us that shoot steel uh, we know you know when a round hits a hard surface you know it, it'll it'll break apart I wouldn't start shooting rounds into the ground next to me so that was kind of iffy and then he raises it and I believe he does uh, squeeze off a couple more rounds and he turns away and then you hear more shots at that point he's already walking the other way in that camera angle of BG on the scene that's what you see that little watermark that little crescent watermark that guy was sitting on the side that in the, in the infamous video that everybody saw. If you look in that video, and as that kid's walking back down the street towards the cop, there's another man with a rifle that runs right in front of him. 
whether that was him shooting back at the kid or shooting back at the protesters on the far side you can't see i don't know but you do see a man with a rifle was he a was he a police officer it was dark and he had dark a dark vest on but you see him run across that screen so now you're starting to see perspectives of who else was there shooting on my twitter account i have and i played it on my live chat uh this past wednesday where a shop owner in that area said there was trucks there multiple trucks in succession driving down the street and he said in his words, that they were in cahoots. They were together. There's also reports of people shooting out, doing drive-bys at that point. Now, were these the people in the trucks? I don't know. I don't know how all that adds up into this frame. But that's his account as he was letting people into his shop to give them safety, to give them cover for what was going on. And he distinctly said that it, he said it sounded like two different firearms. We, as being an avid shooter, we know the different types of sounds firearms make compared to a rifle and a handgun. And that's what he described in his video. So as that kid's walking up there, uh, a lot of, a lot of people are, 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 you know, really you know getting on the cops because they didn't grab this kid or whatnot that i don't know why they didn't either it's i don't know I, they don't know what's going on basically it's a chaotic situation that's what happens in these types of situation limited communication chaos that's what happens uh i've been shot at when i was younger in a crowd full of people chaos limited communication people running scared everywhere people screaming you know and the cops were not there they don't know what's happening did they hear the shots i don't know possibly we don't know this for, for a fact so you see him walk by and he basically skirts off and goes back home i mean uh i would if I was a police officer, if, all right, as, you know, theoretically, if I was a police officer and, you know, after all that stuff would have happened, would I would stop that kid? Probably. And, and that's in my opinion. I'd probably stop that kid and take his firearm from him and ask him what happened. It seemed like uh, they wanted to rush down there and give aid quick. Quicker than asking questions at that point, which you can kind of see it uh, because that's where you want to figure out what's going on. Uh, but I definitely, my opinion, only my opinion, I would definitely have uh, grabbed that kid and asked him what he was doing and asked him about his firearm uh, uh, and, and what happened. Because he said there's people hurt down there, people are screaming that their sh shots have been fired, people are shot. Uh, come down here, come down here, you know, because they're calling for the, the infamous call for police and the call for a medic, things of that nature. Uh, so what I found after all of this had happened through the live stream, because I had to switch to it because the guy that got his arm shot off, uh, the guy that had the firearm, the handgun, uh, the one uh, journalist that I was watching, the CJTV guy, stopped and put a tourniquet on his arm. A lot of people don't understand, and I'm I'm lacked for it myself, is to get medical training. Medical training is uh, vital. In civil unrest, in war, uh, just a, a lazy day where something goes wrong. It is vital. It is vital for survival. You know, if you can't, uh, as a good, uh, a good, uh, uh, course that I'd like to take was called stop the bleed uh, you know if you don't have these kind of vital knowledges or skills uh, you're you're really doing yourself a due diligence and not learning that technique which I'm I'm a fault of as well and I think looking at these certain aspects is one of the things 
uh, that I'm going to encourage myself to do better okay so uh, after that I was roaming through different clips of different people that were either there near the scene or were directly there all right I came across this clip where one of these young men uh, he had his uh, tactical vest on he had his AR um, the whole the whole uh, kit and caboodle on and he claimed after people said well why did you guys leave you know what I'm saying things of that nature why did you guys leave the gas station and the one kid said he had he was helping people you know he's helping people what at that point it wasn't about protecting property he, he was helping people that were hurt and uh, he says earlier in the night the police department told them as they're walking uh, down the street that they're glad they're there and their intent was to push the protesters to these people because they could they could handle what they couldn't what that means I don't know but if that police department had that mentality God forbid them I've been talking about this video for quite some time while I was sitting there watching it live I always wondered why they pushed them in those people's direction and not the other way that's something to really look at I forward that to Tim to the military arms channel uh, that video and never heard a response it's on my Twitter account you can go look at it I've I played the video on my live show what this kid said how it was deliberately intended to push the protesters into these kids with guns if that is the truth that is the most shameful stuff shit that I have ever heard in my life and I'll tell you I have friends that are police officers I've told you about my interaction with police officers at times good or bad but that is one of the most blatant egregious things that you could ever do is to make this happen to create this into what it is now that we see today so we'll have to see how this plays out there's a diff there's a lot of different laws that were broken there's a lot of different morals uh, that were met there are a lot of different moral, morals for others that were broken. This is a, another delicate situation of the time. What is right? What is wrong? Right time, wrong place, wrong place, wrong time. We'll have to see how this uh, presents itself further down the road. And we are way long, way long down that road at this point we're, we're not even around the corner at this point so I want to stress to you if you want to go see some of these videos go on to my Twitter account if they haven't been taken down again uh, I've been getting kind of censored by the media whether it be Facebook Instagram even people have said some videos have not shown back up on my YouTube channel or they were abruptly taken off and then put back on don't know it happens I'm I'm nor conservative or liberal I'm in between I'm I put myself further as a constitutionalist and a libertarian uh, sort of person uh, than a right or right or left kind of person okay uh, so the other thing I can only say about that is uh, I deal with firearms plain and simple and these platforms don't like it the last is incident I want to talk about is a young man that took his life in Minneapolis uh, the the next day all right uh, what's sad about this situation is the news news media in and certain outlets reported that the police shot the, this guy that wasn't the case he took his own life there's footage of it. He walks in front of a group of people 
walks in the corner by a store and gives himself the business. All right. Other news sources say the police shot people down in that area. Guess what happens? I watch videos of them go through stores and break stuff, grab people, things of that nature. And that's what you had on that street in Minneapolis that other people were live streaming as well that I watched. Uh, I, at first I thought it was just because of what has happened, transpired over the last few days, the last few months uh, uh, of everything that's gone on. Uh, no, it was just because the media lied. Uh, people in life will use you for personal gain or profit. That's, that's how it is always. Politicians do it every day. They go on their stump speeches. Corporations do it every day when they tell you to buy their product. Just the way the world is. And this is one of the sad things about the media today. Is they will use every aspect to divide Americans. Whether left or right. Or center. It does not matter. They are in it to profit off of you. They are into it to put those little captions on your Facebook, Instagram, whatever piece of social media you use. To make you comment. To make you stir the pot if with you, with that comment you put in there and make everybody hate each other. I see it every day. I see it every day. As soon as I put in a comment about the 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 basketball players that refused to play their game uh, due to the fact of injustice, um, I say, well, I didn't refuse to do my job when I'm an essential worker and I have to go to work. You just play sports, bud. What? I played semi-pro ball, if, if if you can even call it that. But I played ball. You know what I'm saying? I did that those kind of stuff. I was sports-oriented until I got older. You know, and life took hold and I had to take responsibilities in my life. I mean, I've, I've done all that. You know, and as soon as you put those comments in there, it's like, you know... I, I could have stayed home too. You know, I could have stayed home, but I didn't want to because people needed things. You know, I needed to help people. I needed my business to stay open so I could have a job. So they don't close. You know, things of that nature. And I got totally just pretty much, I guess it's can cancel culture or culture cancel or whatever the frick that stuff is nowadays. I've been kicked out of groups that I've been in for years, for my opinions. Cancel culture stuff or whatever you want to call it. This is their job. This is the media's job. The only thing I can say is, this isn't the last of it. It's just not going to dissipate overnight. This is a thing that's gone on time and time again. And one more quick little tidbit in Kenosha if I can find the video of when the protesters went out to the rural areas let me tell you if you thought what happened in the city was bad what happened in that rural area was on the same par so let that be a lesson to all you people that think that rioting and thinking you're going to walk through people's residential neighborhoods uh, in certain areas and aspects uh, that they're going to tolerate it. Those people didn't tolerate it. And you'll learn the hard way that people are kind of fed up with it. We all know that there's a problem with law enforcement. The way they handle certain situations. This isn't blind to my eye, my family's eye, or my friend's eye. But what blinds us from you is when you loot, burn, and I watch you on YouTube beat shop owners unconscious. That's what makes me not want to help you. I was told once by, by a, 
a pretty brilliant guy is, you cannot help anybody in this life until you help yourself. And as soon as you help yourself and you get yourself squared away, you will open a door of helping others that you never thought you could believe. And it all ha happened because you helped you. Take it for what you are, what you will. If you want to go find this stuff, you can go on Twitter. It says Roll Call 2010, but there's a little banner up there that says 219. Uh, I joined Twitter in 2010. Twitter won't let me change that kind of aspect of it, so I have to live with it. I'm not going to protest about it. I'm just going to go on with it. You can find me over here on YouTube. For all my new, my old subscribers, all you guys, uh, the oldies but goodies, and then the people that just slip through the channel. I greatly appreciate all the support I've got over the last few years doing YouTube. I do have a Patreon account, and I always stress to people, if you are still struggling with the effects of COVID-19, do not donate to my channel at all. Whether it's with the PayPal link or the Patreon account, save that money, stock that money, buy things for you and your family. So, with all this being said, again, I want to thank my new, my old, and just the people that zip through. I greatly appreciate it. Like, comment, subscribe, share your favorite gun content. Leave a comment below if you disagree. We all have our opinions. They're just like assholes.